Last time on Sailing Solianus. That's our boat! <laughs> After buying a trailerable trimaran, we've got a ton to do to prepare her for launching. Our biggest hurdle thus far? Installing a mooring anchor. Installation went almost too smoothly, leaving us wondering if the lake bed was dense enough to hold our anchors. Went down really easy. Yeah, I hope the bottom's solid enough. But we'll see. Now we're tackling more of the launch list, which includes building and installing the rest of our mooring and cleaning the boat and sails. So the sails we got for this boat was one of the worst parts of it. They're both, they're actually both not that used. They're just old and they're really dirty. So I'm gonna try to clean them today. Yeah. You wanna carry it out to the hill? Yeah. Okay, here you go. All right, so walk out that way, babe. Let's that go. And I'll walk towards Chip. Can you walk towards Chip? Yeah. You can carry that with you. Just keep walking. Go ahead. I'll be right behind you. First, I tried just plain dish soap and water. Oh, it's just not doing anything. There's like no dirt coming off. Here, let's try a different spot. Can I have to do it? You want to try? Yeah. Really, it just looks stained. Okay, so now we're gonna try OxyClean. Uh, it was actually recommended on Precision Sales website uh, for cleaning dirty sails. So I'm gonna scrub this on and then let it sit and see if it does anything. So let's give this a whirl. Yeah, do you wanna go up on the steps and I'll wash your hands in just a minute. So this looks like rust. And I'm gonna do it. There's a little bit of rust right there, but all the other stuff, maybe it is like some sort of mildew on the inside of the sail. Okay, so I cleaned it, rinsed it, let it sit. And it any better? Uh, I can't say that it does. That's a bummer. Yeah. I don't think any of the mildew inside came out. Yeah, look at that. Maybe this would have to be thrown into a giant Washing machine? Yeah, I, I don't think that's how it would work, but. Oh, it was definitely how that, every sail loft has a giant washing machine. Didn't you know that? Like a swimming pool sized yeah. <laughs> washing machine. But yeah, I, I think a sail loft might be able to do something better than what we did. It really doesn't look that bad. I mean, it looks bad, it looks but it's bad. not like topical dirt that we can just get off. Yeah. It's, it's in there. We're gonna get new sails hopefully at some point. And if we don't get new sails soon, we'll take it to a sail loft and see if they can do something. Okay. My guess is that we're gonna blow this sail out sooner than later because while it's very unused, like it it's looks old. crispy, it's very old. Yeah. And the fibers, as soon as they start to get stressed, are, might have rot damage or right. sun damage and they'll just go. Yeah. We tried it. We so, tried. <laughs> in the bag. Put the sail in the bag? Yeah. So like the way that this oh. thing is sat folded for so long, yeah. that's where I feel like it's gonna blow out. Stay this is why folding a sail is actually not a good thing to do. Rolling it is better. With the exception of our mooring ball, our anchor, and our chain, this is all the hardware we needed to build our mooring. Most moorings are built with an anchor, a shackle, a really heavy chain at one and a half times the depth, a swivel, and then a lighter chain at one X the depth. So you have two and a half X scope plus your actual mooring pennant. 
We're doing a super fast surgical strike mission to get the other part of our mooring installed before it gets too dark tonight. Okay, we're going to install our mooring chain. So I'm going out on the paddleboard with my bucket of chain, my Nemo, a mask. Kind of racing the clock here. I gotta go out to that little orange buoy right out there behind that sailboat. She digging with her sandal. <laughs> Baby, daddy's gonna go get in the water for a few minutes. I'll be back in just a few, okay? I wanted to talk a little bit about how we sized everything. Our largest mooring anchor is supposed to give us 3,500 pounds of holding strength. All the rest of this, basically everything is oversized. And that's kind of the point with a mooring. When it's a permanent mooring, you want everything to be oversized. You don't want to worry about coming up against your working strength or your breaking loads or any of that stuff. So the primary factor in what we started our sizing for all of this equipment was one, I wanted the largest swivel that I could buy within reason because this is the only piece that is moving. And when a mooring chain and swivel sits in the water and is twisting, sometimes under a little bit of load, grinding with all sorts of little grains of sand and bits and things in there, this is like usually the piece that goes first. Don't want to dump this bucket of chain. That would be tough to recover. Brilliant. Send it, Mr. Nemo. So we're gonna try and get right over our mooring ball, which we are, and then we're gonna kind of bombs away here <laughs> because I don't think I'm gonna be able to move this chain around very easily. Under the water, here goes nothing. A lot of the decisions we made were sort of based around this. Also, the eye of our mooring anchor, the first shackle that went over that had to be able to fit through there. And so we had to size our chain to be able to fit the shackle with the, with the pin that goes through there to meet the size of the eye of our, of our anchor. I gotta drop the chain in the water, connect it to the anchor eye. The way that this all works, we have a, a three quarter inch shackle attaching to our mooring anchor. We've got one and a half times the depth of five eighths chain off of that shackled to our giant three quarter inch swivel. And then attach the line that's attached to the buoy to the chain and back in I come. This is all just temporary, by the way, because West Marine shipped us chain three weeks ago and FedEx lost it, and now there's no more chain left, apparently. But for now, we wanted to have all chain from our anchor to our bridle so that we could launch our boat and not worry about chafe while on the mooring. So once we get the smaller chain, we'll add another half inch shackle going to half inch chain at one X the depth. And then we're going to be shackling to our five eighths inch three strand polyester mooring line. And so we have polyester mooring line and we have nylon mooring bridle. And there's, there's a reason there's a difference. So nylon three strand has far superior stretch, which is what you need to absorb the shock loads when you're in really high wind situation. The polyester has much better UV resistance. And so for a piece that is going to be permanently attached to the mooring, that is always gonna be out in the sun, um, that is also gonna be in the water, polyester was a better choice. Uh, we've got a little bit of chafe protection as well. We've got some plastic thimbles. These are actually nylon thimbles to protect our mooring lines. We've got a mantis mooring shackle, snap shackle here. We've got a float so that it's very easy to keep our mooring pennant floating at the surface and we can pick it up easily with a boat hook. And that's that. So my next step is to get to splicing three strand. I've never spliced three strand before. It seems super, super easy. You got a ball, babe? Yeah. 
But this is like all mission critical stuff, so I'm, I'm really putting my skills to the test here. This is what I really enjoy, is learning new skills and, and utilizing them. So it's kind of cool to be able to put all of this stuff together. I'm not buying pre-spliced stuff off the shelf. Um, and that way I get to make it exactly how I want it, out of the exact materials that I want it, and, you know, learn, learn everything in the process. Now I go get it. Now you go get it, okay. You got the ball? Yeah. All right. They say you only need five splices for synthetic fibers, but for things that are for moorings or anchorings or like permanent splices, you should do seven. So I've done seven on, on this one. This is our mooring bridle or our anchor bridle. I think this one looks way better. It's much tighter too. Maybe bucket? Around for bucket. Bucket. Lion face. Lion face. Maybe, maybe mommy and mom want some ice cream. Maybe I do. What's that? What's that, Mother? That's some seizing wire. What's that? Seizing wire? Or what's in Dada's hand? Yeah. This is robe line. Robe line. Or rob line. I don't know how you say it. Rob line. It's whipping twine. Whipping twine. What's that? That's a... What is this called? Something palm. What's that a headband? It's called a needle maker's palm. Sewing so, seamstress palm. Did I put the, that needle on? So this is definitely not gonna look like a professional job. I'm hoping it will somewhat act like a professional job. <laughs> we'll see though. I think this is why there's child labor laws, bird. So the boat is full of these mud dauber nests. It's called a mud dauber wasp, I think. They use mud and they make these tiny little nests. They look kind of like a swallow nests, but really small. These mud daubers are actually from Florida. The nests were there when we bought the boat. And they're in all the deep, dark crevices of the boat. So I am going to try to get rid of them all. Go right, right in front of Mama. Right to the corner. One of the last steps to complete our mooring was to splice the ends of the bridle that go to each of the amas. Can you go back in the corner over there? Yeah. 
Yeah, there you go, babe. It's extremely important that each side of the bridle are the exact same length to prevent the boat from sailing around on the mooring. Put it right at the end of the measuring tape. All right. They're, they're right there. So we want each side to be 16 and a half feet. So right at the end there. Okay. I'm gonna pull the ropes right up to the end. That's actually probably perfect. I have just enough. Okay. Then I'm just gonna go and make sure that our ropes are straight. We want these to be as close to exactly the same length as we can get them. Oh. Now she's laying on her belly. Renata's laying on her belly? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. All done. Voila. And the finished splice. The bride is complete and now the mooring is ready for us to launch the boat. So this will be our new bridle. What I'm trying to figure out is, okay, so that's no problem. Because what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go like this. And we're gonna luggage tag this line here. All right. Cool. It might be launch day, it might be launch day. Um, it looks like a very tight fit. It is a tight fit. We're gonna put this big beast in the water. We hope. We have a literal laundry list of items to do yet. Ooh. Doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good enough.